Hello everybody, Ben Woodard here with another falconry video. This video I'm going to be talking about a little bit about the names of birds and what's actually been changing. A lot of people have asked me to kind of comment and weigh in on this subject. Uh, sort of an interesting time period we're in right now. So in case you don't know, uh, typically, I guess it depends on what part of the world you live in, but every species has an internationally recognized scientific name that is written and expressed in the dead Latin language. And since, there, since nobody speaks Latin as their language now, it's a dead language, then we're not showing favoritism to anybody. It's not like your country's language sets the precedence. So it's Latin. And that way, anybody in the world, it doesn't matter what anybody calls an animal in my area, I can talk to somebody, on the, a scientist on the other side of the world, a falconer on the other side of the world, and if I say falco peregrinus, they're like, ah, falco peregrinus. I may call it a peregrine falcon. They might call it a black-capped pigeon slayer. Doesn't matter. The name, the scientific name, is internationally, we all say the same thing. But the common name is sort of by consensus. Some countries, some regions will have uh, a, a society, scientific organizations that will say, we officially declare that this is the common name of this species. But it really is kind of a consensus because even if some lofty organization specifies, we officially declare this, it doesn't matter. It's whatever the populace says. If, if uh, the Great Basin Rattlesnake is officially called the Great Basin Rattlesnake in my area, but literally everybody calls it a shaky snake, then the common name is effectively, functionally, a shaky snake. It's just how it goes. So here's what's happening right now. The American Ornithological Society has decided that any bird with a, in the English language that occurs within our borders that has a human name as part of their name is problematic and hurtful and harmful. And they're specifically saying, well, some of the people, some of the humans that certain birds were named after, those humans' lives were not um, you know, ethical or were not good. Uh, and by today's standards, we would look at the morals of those people and we say, well, these people don't deserve to have a name, an animal named after them. And maybe nobody should. Maybe we should name it off of its attributes. And some people are very upset about this. Some people think it's great and progressive. This is a discussion worthy of being had. If you want to talk about what should we call something by a common name, cool, do it. Have a discussion. That's fine. Um, but at the end of the day, the common name is just a bunch of sounds that we all agree on or that the general populace goes by. Uh, and if you're going to talk about problematic, I'm curious at what point do we say, well, Latin is based off of the Roman culture, the ancient Roman culture. Steady Roman history. They did some pretty reprehensible things. Are we going to pull out that language and say we have to have all scientific names be with another dead language? Are you going to find any dead language that isn't from a people who did reprehensible things at one point or another? Just something to think about. But here's why uh, I say these things happen. Um, I grew up in a time where this has already happened. What we think of as today's names weren't the names I was taught by. I'm old enough that I was mentored by falconers who grew up in the area, in my area, where they called peregrine falcons duck hawks. They called merlins, your type of falcon, pigeon hawks. And they called kestrels, American kestrels, sparrow hawks. Now, I find that last one has been the hardest one to get. I still know amazing falconers, some of the old timers, that still can't shake. They still call kestrels sparrow hawks. I know what they're talking about, and it's like, well, it's a kestrel, but we both know a kestrel is Falco sparvarius. We both know a merlin is Falco columbarius. We both know that a peregrine is Falco peregrinus. We both know that. We both know we're talking about the same species. I'm still going to say kestrel because it is a kestrel, but it's interesting that even today in 2024, some of the, the most well-versed uh, biologists and falconers that I know still call kestrels sparrowhawks. Well, now they're trying to say anything with a, with a human name, we need to discuss and come up with good ideas of what we change and what we all agree upon should be the new terms. Uh, Cooper's Hawk is one that keeps coming up in news reports and among falconers uh, that Mr. Cooper apparently shouldn't, is not a person worthy to have a, a bird named after him. So, great. 
have that discussion. But here's what I want to say that has nothing to do with that. If you are going to do that, if you're going to say, we need to, over 70 species that we need to reassess and take a look at and maybe rename, then why don't, while you're at it, why don't you change and make some of our raptor names actually accurate? So let me give you an example. The sharp-shinned hawk. First of all, dumbest name ever. Oh, because their shins are sharp? You're looking through your binoculars and like, oh, yeah, I, it, its shins are really pointy and very narrow on the edges. It's just, that's the dumbest field attribute I've ever heard of. We know genetically that sharp-shinned hawks are a very recent species as far as when they branched off from what they branched off from, which is Eurasian sparrowhawks. They directly came from Eurasian sparrowhawks. Uh, they should be called an American sparrowhawk. That's just what they should be called, because that's what they are. Cooper's hawks. All the names I've seen people online saying, we should call them blue darters, slady back this, or we should call them American sparrowhawks. They're not sparrowhawks. They may be closer in size to most sparrowhawks of the world, but actually, Cooper's hawks, Genetic studies have shown, as well as the, the, the fossil evidence through paleontology, uh, they were the first discipliner known to colonize North America and to disperse out and increase their range, and they branched off of goshawks. And we also know they are so closely related to goshawks that they will interbreed with goshawks in the wild. Now, to our sensibilities, when we look at a, an adult sharpshinned hawk and an adult cooper's hawk, their colors look very similar. We look at an adult cooper's hawk compared to an adult goshawk, and they look nothing alike to us. But to their eyes, they see how much more closely related they are. Cooper's hawk and a sharpshinned hawk would never interbreed in the wild, but a cooper's hawk and a goshawk do. People in the United States, we have one native goshawk, and that is the northern goshawk, which has just recently been separated and classified as the American goshawk. I don't know why, but it sounds a little less, ooh, spirit of the wilderness to me. Doesn't matter. It's accurate. But guess what? There are a lot of goshawks in the world, classified and named as such, that are the size of a Cooper's hawk and even have coloration like a cooper's hawk. There's a lot uh, in, in Southeast Asia and into the Indo-Pacific areas in Australia that are the size, shape, and roughly the color of a cooper's hawk. Since cooper's hawks branched off from goshawks directly, it should have a goshawk name. Nobody's gonna back me up on that because we're in America and no, a goshawk is big. Not according to the rest of the world. That would be my bid. If you're going to rename the Cooper's Hawk since it has a human name attached to it, it should be the something or other goshawk, the lesser goshawk, the red-chested goshawk, the something, something goshawk, because it, it, it is more, more accurately a goshawk than it is a sparrowhawk or anything else. All of your bootios, all of your soaring hawks, all of them are buzzards. A red-tailed hawk is not a hawk, it's a buzzard. In America, most people hear the word buzzard and they picture a vulture. Uh, I've done videos explaining why this is. It's really stupid, it's very inaccurate. Um, American falconers and even American birders and bird watchers and biologists have a hard time with that. Nobody else in the world does. Everybody else in the world knows that a red-tailed hawk is a red-tailed buzzard. So if you're gonna be changing, oh, we don't want to offend people and we need to change the, don't have human names attached to a bird. Okay, while you're at it, I'm sorry, but a rough-legged hawk should be changed to a rough-legged buzzard. Red-tailed hawk should be changed to a red-tailed buzzard. A ferruginous hawk should be changed to a ferruginous buzzard. A red-shouldered hawk should be changed to a red-shouldered buzzard. All of your bootios should be changed to buzzard. Uh, I know how abrasive that sounds. For I can get that for me to suggest that to your average American bird enthusiast would be like when I hear somebody call a kestrel a sparrowhawk. It's like, yeah, yeah. I grew up with them kestrel because they are a kestrel. I'm like, well, I grew up with them as sparrowhawk. But the fact of the matter is, everywhere else in the world, jackal buzzard, common buzzard, auger buzzard, any of your other buzzards, we just say buzzard and we, we understand what that is. It's a big soaring raptor. It's a bootio. It's a buzzard. Um, also, bald eagles are not eagles. Okay, the true eagles are the Aquila eagles. And when, you, when you're speaking in taxonomy, so it'd be like a golden eagle, a tawny eagle, a steppe eagle, an imperial eagle, a spotted eagle. Your Aquila eagles are your true eagles. So all the other ones, all the other sea eagles, we're fine naming them what they are. A stellar sea eagle, we call it a sea eagle, which is kind of like a, a, a fake eagle, a pseudo eagle, a para eagle. Okay, uh, the closest relative of a bald eagle 
is the white-tailed sea eagle lives on the other side of the pond. Nobody has a problem calling it the white-tailed sea eagle. Uh, we have white-bellied sea eagles. We have all these sea eagles. A bald eagle should be called a white-headed sea eagle. Could be called something else, but it's what it is. Could be called the American sea eagle. Could be the North American sea eagle. But it's a sea eagle. Change it. If you're going to make these changes about human names, why don't you call a bald eagle what it is? Because people think a bald eagle and a golden eagle, those are our eagles. No. A golden eagle is an eagle. A bald eagle is a sea eagle, not an eagle. And they're not closely related at all. They are so distantly related that a bald and a golden eagle cannot intermix. But a, bald, but a golden eagle and a red-tailed hawk can. That should tell you how far apart they are. Eagle does not mean a big bird of prey. It, it's referring to specific genetic lineages. And last, a great horned owl. A great horned owl is a true eagle owl. And every other eagle owl out there, they seem to get it right. Eurasian eagle owl, it's an eagle owl that lives in Europe and Asia. The pharaonic eagle owl that lives in, in Egypt and, and sub-Saharan Africa. Magellan's eagle owl when you get down into the New World tropics. Uh, there's so many African eagle owl. There, there's so many. But here in America, it's a great horned owl. It's a great owl and it's got horns. Yeah, so do all the other eagle owls. It should be called the American Eagle Owl or the North American Eagle Owl because that's what it is. Its counterpart on the other side of the world in Europe and Asia is the Eurasian Eagle Owl, the one in North America, North American Eagle Owl or the American Eagle Owl. There's many others that I could give. We could go on and on and on with these, but my point is, I my suggestion is, hey, if we're going to have a discussion about problematic names for raptors, like Cooper's Hawk being named after Mr. Cooper, well then, while we're at it, why don't we actually talk about the bigger issue, the problematic issue? We have lots of raptors that are being called something totally different than they actually are. Um, might as well have some taxonomic accuracy. Uh, I know this is a heated discussion with people on all different sides. I welcome you sharing your comments down below. Uh, be respectful of each other, but have at it. If you think renaming his birds is stupid, Share your thoughts as to why. If you think it's the best thing ever, share your thoughts as to why. I just, in my mind, I think taxonomy is one of the most brilliant gifts. It helps us wrap our heads around and organize and discuss with people from all around the world something that's fluid and changing and messy. It, it, it brings order to that. And so we might as well have our common names reflect the scientific names. Uh, a true hawk like a goshawk. A, a hawk, a true hawk, is a sipiter. Its name, scientific name starts with a sipiter. A buzzard, its scientific name starts with bootio. Red-tailed hawk starts with bootio. Rough-legged hawk starts with bootio because they're buzzards. So why don't we just say that also in our, in our common names? I think it would make a whole lot more sense. Anyways, very different video than I normally do, but hope you found it interesting, maybe learned a thing or two. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe. It, it helps me keep this channel up and going. Let me know your comments and thoughts down below, and as always, happy hawking.